Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the US. If you are new to my live stream, pop new in the comments so we can say hello to you. It is episode, what is this, 231, March 9th, 2022. Welcome, welcome. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. I'm gonna say hi to a few of you. Hi, Linda, hi, Deborah, Robin, Randy, Diane, hi, Angie. Welcome, I'm seeing comments from both YouTube and Facebook, so yay, all seems to be going well. I love how you all are saying hello to each other as well, love the community we're building here. Hi, Linda, hi, Cindy, Maria, Edna, welcome. We are gonna be playing with the Daffodil Daydream bundle tonight. I love this bundle. I finally just started to play with it. I absolutely love daffodils because of just the sign of spring and new beginnings and the daffodils are already blooming here in Georgia because I'm sure it's confused with the, <laughs> with the weather. But that's what we're gonna be using tonight. I've got two projects to share with you. I'll do a quick sneak peek. This is a treat holder that fits one of the Russell Stover um, marshmallow eggs. And then we've got a card, which I may tweak a little bit tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm my own best critic, but this is the card. Really quick and easy. The focal, focal point here, obviously, is that bunch of daffodils. The color inspiration came from the Celebration Daffodil Afternoon Designer Series paper. I absolutely love the pairings of Flirty Flamingo, Pale Papaya, and Very Vanilla. Just a beautiful color scheme for Easter and the Daffodil Daydream bundle. I will show this again when I flip it, but this is a perfect set because it's got Easter and Mother's Day. So those spring um, occasions coming up and there's a lot of dyes in the Daffodil Dyes set. So we're gonna play with those. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks to put those together. Um, but I am gonna go ahead and, well, Brian's waiting for his cameo. I see him keep looking at me here. <laughs> so here's, <laughs> I'm like, why does Brian keep looking at me? Okay, this is Brian, my husband. He is watching all of your comments from both YouTube and Facebook. If you have a question, if you can put Q in front of, Q colon in front of your question, that will help us pull together your questions at the end. We'll do Q and A at the end because once I get started on my projects, it's hard for me to also watch the comments and answer your questions. And I know many of you are here to learn how to make the project, so I don't want to interrupt that. So we'll do Q&A at the end. Make sure you put Q colon in front of your question. All questions are open here. It doesn't have to be about the project. We'll do rapid fire at the end of the live stream. And I do have some show and tell from the kiddos tonight. I do want to give you a quick update. Thank you for all the wonderful birthday wishes. I did have my colonoscopy on Monday, which was my birthday. I can't say that I loved doing a colonoscopy on my birthday, but... Um, I had a clean colonoscopy, no polyps, which is fantastic because I get a five-year reprieve until my next one. So as I mentioned before, I lost count. I don't know if this was colonoscopy six, seven, or eight, but I've been having them since I was 27 due to family history. I lost my mom to colon cancer. But in the um, procedure room, they played the happy birthday song for me. I thought that was so cool. So I am super relieved to have a clean uh, result from that. So it was worth all the prep. As I was drinking my last eight ounces of Gatorade, I was like, I'm not sure I can do this, but I powered through it. <laughs> and we had a nice cheeseburger for lunch afterwards and we went out to dinner, we had barbecue for dinner. So my stomach was like, whoa, what are you doing to me? But I was like, I don't care, I'm starving. Because <laughs> I think the last solid meal I had was lunchtime on Saturday. So anyways. I know you don't really care about the colonoscopy, but it is Colon Cancer Awareness Month. So if you are age 45 or older and you haven't done your colonoscopy, go do it. It is totally worth it. All right. You guys are so awesome. Thank you. Thanks for the birthday wishes. All right. Let's jump through a couple more things. My host code for the month of March. I have got three choices. If you place an order of $50 or more with me, three free gift choices. 
And if you don't want to remember that host code, just use my shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will take you directly to my Stampin' Up! online store and automatically or auto-magically add that host code to your order. If your order is going to be $150 or more before shipping and taxes, make sure you take that host code off your order because you will earn Stampin' Rewards. But yes, those are my three free gift choices for orders of $50 or more with me this month. The All Together collection is still available. There are three marker uh, Stampin' Blend combo packs that are currently not orderable. As of today, the last I checked, they are going to be available, estimated availability the week of April 4th. Love the All Together collection. The blends are the only thing in that collection that are continuing into the annual catalog. So the bundle and the paper, those are while supplies last through May 2nd. The Waves of the Ocean collection dropped this month. What's exclusive in this suite collection of products is the Designer Series Paper, which is an acrylic pour technique, which goes right into what my show and tell is from Lily today. Um, but acrylic pour technique is the pattern on that Designer Series Paper. It is stunning. There's a beautiful, beautiful foil specialty paper. The bundle, the stamp and die bundle, will be in the annual catalog. And then there's rhinestones. Those are exclusive for the early release as well. And those are while supplies last. So uh, also I wanted to point out really quickly, I will be sending an email to all the customers that have shopped with me in the last six months. I'm going to do a um, catalog request process for the annual catalog because I want to make sure I'm sending catalogs to those of you who want them. I don't want to just automatically send you one if you don't want one because I know some of you like to shop online, but you'll be getting an e email from me in the next couple of days if you've ordered with me in the last six months, and we can get you on that catalog list for the new annual catalog, which launches on May 3rd. And this month only, the Mini Boss, or the Mini Stamp and Cut and Emboss Machine, is 20% off, along with 13 select compatible bundles. I think the only one of those 13 bundles that's not available right now is the Wildcats bundle, but that's coming up here in, I think, the week of March 21st, if I'm um, remembering that correctly. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like complimentary copies of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. All right, show and tell. So Nolan is starting on a book, and this is what he chose to show you and he's making notes of what the things are. So he's learning how to write his letters. He's in kindergarten. So we've got the sun, we've got clouds, we've got a flower, and we have grass. So this is page one. He's assured me he's going to continue working on it. So we may be showing future book pages in the, on future live streams. And then Lily had this really cool acrylic paint pouring kit. Bring that up to the camera. The one that I loved, but she didn't bring me was, it was like a purple, pink, and blue, but it was so fun. We did acrylic paint that we layered in and then poured it over these rocks. She's my little crafty girl, so that's what she wanted to show you tonight. And I thought that was fitting with the Waves of the Ocean collection because that is the same technique they used for the paper. All right, so show and tell from the kids this week. All right, thank you, honey. All right, so this is what we're making tonight. Let's get that off the screen here. We have got, I love this color combination, but this is coming from, let me show you in the catalog, page 37 in the mini catalog. This is the Daffodil Daydream Bundle. It's $54.75 if you buy it bundled, you get a 10% discount. But I just love both of these two, like the bunch of daffodils and the single daffodil as well. The dyes that are in this are really what makes this bundle. I don't want you to be intimidated by the dies. Um, they are really fun to play with, but let me just show you. I'll pull out both of these. There's 24 dies in the set, but all of these pieces and parts go together. Most of these are to make daffodils, but you got a couple of pieces and parts for the butterfly. I know there was a question about what this little die was for, and I believe that is the center of the butterfly for you, um, but lots of fun. And then you've got these long leaves and stems and then these dies that cut out these beautiful daffodil images. So I don't know if you guys have played with this before, but I absolutely love it. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks to put together the daffodil on the treat holder. And in fact, we're gonna do the treat holder first. I'm gonna show you what's in that. Now I found these at, where did I find these? Target, but I think I also saw them at Kroger 
and Walmart. They're pretty easy to find. This seems to be 25% more is the size, but it's gonna fit in this treat box holder. And you can get two of these out of a sheet of eight and a half by 11. Let me go ahead and put the card away and let's get started on the treat holder. If I cut. <laughs> oh. All right, so I've got a piece of pale papaya that measures five and a half by six and a half. So what I do with an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock is I will trim off two inches from the eight and a half inch side. So you start with a six and a half by 11 piece and then cut that in half on the long side and you'll get two pieces out of eight and a half by 11. You'll have the two inch strip that you can use. Uh, we're using the delightful tag topper punch on here. That two inch strip you could turn into two or three um, like bookmarks or gift tags. All you need is a two inch strip to use with that delightful tag topper punch. So don't waste your cardstock. You can use that two inch sort of um, cutaway strip to do other projects. So five and a half by six and a half. I do have a template for you tonight. So we're gonna turn this in landscape. So we've got the six and a half inch side along the top here. <laughs> Brian's already anticipating the template. And we're gonna score this. I didn't write my measurements down. That's what today has gone like, but I've got them in my head. So two inches, three inches, five inches, six inches. So two, three, five, and six. Rotate it clockwise. Score it at one. Now, when we bring in the template, we're gonna make some score lines that are kind of in the middle of the cardstock. I didn't wanna put a score line through the sections that we're gonna do the tag topper punch, but essentially that's gonna be at the three inch mark. Now, what I found easiest to do here is I'm just gonna flip this and we're gonna score at three inches, but we're gonna stop at the second score line. I'm gonna show that. So we wanna come here and stop. And then if you kind of eyeball it and I just, I'm not pressing down, but I'm just, you know, trying to stay in line there and trying to pick up that next section here. It doesn't need to be perfect. This is really for us to eyeball, to cut. So we've got a little bit of the sides here. I brought it down to, this is actually a two inch section so that when you tie this together, you kind of get that curved. Um, I don't know how to describe that, but I think it's easier to see them for me to describe but that's just a cute way to close off this treat holder. So that's all the scoring that we need to do. And I'm gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines, except for those short ones. So if you are new to paper crafting, I always fold, I turn the valley score lines into a mountain fold. That's the direction that I go to fold and burnish. We'll do that bottom one. I'm gonna bring the template back here, let's see. All right, so. I've got it in this orientation. I've got the two inch section here on the left. This is in landscape right now. Paper snips, okay. I am gonna first come in and cut up each of my vertical score lines along the bottom and I actually can see better, I don't know why, on the back side. So I'm just gonna cut up each of those score lines stopping at the first horizontal score line. And then this lower corner here, I'm just gonna come in and remove it, but also miter cut here along the side. I'm gonna fold these big sections out of the way and we're gonna miter cut on those one inch square tabs. These are gonna end up being the tabs for the bottom of our treat holder. I'm calling this the Daffodil Daydream Easter Treat Holder, but we may come up with a different name for it. You can fit a lot of different treats in here. Do a little sidebar here. Will a sanitizer fit? Um, I'll get to that, Tina. I just see what happens when I look at the comments. Um, it is two inches wide by one inches deep. I think definitely a sanitizer will fit. We'll try that at the Q&A time. And then um, I'm gonna come in along the side here I want you to see that score line. I'm gonna cut right up to where that score line, or through that score line, right to where it stops. And again, if it's easier to see it on the back side. So we've cut on that score line there, okay? I'm gonna come in and miter cut on this as well. 
This is gonna end up being our side that we're gonna adhere our little treat holder together with. All right, now next, I'm gonna flip it this way. We're gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines, but I'm gonna stop where we made that three inch mark. And for this, because it's the tag topper punch, I always like to cut just inside the score line here. And that just gives us, it'll fit, it'll fit better in that tag topper punch. So I'll show you in just a second here. So I basically removed the score line. It's now on the piece that we just cut away, but I'm literally right next to it. Do the same thing on each of these again. In this instance, I'm cutting just to the right of the score line, stopping at that three inch short score line, and then just to the left of the score line. Ooh, you guys have good questions, I can see them. All right, so now this is just a little bit tricky. You could do this with your paper trimmer as well, but I wanna come in with my scissors and remove this piece. So I'm just gonna come in this way and cut right on that score line like so, okay? All right, let's get the mess out of here. Let's see if I grabbed that piece, I probably did not. I think I did. All right, so I've got a piece of the 2021 to 2023 in color designer series paper. This is in the pale papaya. I think that's the right years for this. These aren't the ones that are retiring. No, I had to think about that for a second. So this piece measures two inches wide by four and a half. And we're gonna adhere that because I wanted to give a little bit of a pattern to the front of the treat holder. This is totally optional. Um, let me get this out of the way. I'm gonna grab my liquid glue and I just wanted to give this sort of tone on tone pattern color to this. Tone on tone pattern color. This tone on tone pattern to this front panel here. And I'm just gonna use liquid glue on this. You can use any of the patterns in that designer series paper. It comes in six by six. It's often overlooked in the catalog. It's in the annual catalog, but I love adding just a little bit of a pattern to something like this. Now I put glue all over the back because we are going to end up punching this. So I'm just going to line that up just to basically overlap that two inch by four and a half inch wide section. Just kind of the liquid glue helps me kind of slide things into place there. All right, so now this is going to be ready. Now if you feel any raised edges from using your paper trimmer, quick tip, just use your bone folder to smooth those raised edges out. All right, let's grab our delightful tag topper punch. Any of our tag topper punches will work with this. This one's my favorite. We've got the fancy tag topper and delightful tag topper. These are the two that we have right now. The scallop tag topper will work, will work as well, but that's retired. But I know many of you have that one in your stash. All right, so I'm gonna just feed both of these into the delightful tag topper. And what I like to do is always look from the back. So I am just centering this piece before I punch. Like so, okay? The camera's being silly about um, focusing. And then we're gonna do the same thing to the opposite side. You've got room for it to fit into the tray, but I still love to flip it over and just make sure that that's centered. And then we make a a mess with our paper pieces that pop out. So there is what this looks like before we're gonna put it together. And I'm already looking, my, I didn't cut that straight. <laughs> Let's trim that from the other side here. There we go, that was gonna bother me. All right, so now I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna fold on the second score line from the left and using liquid glue, Put that right on that half inch tab. And then I'm gonna fold on the first score line from the left and our score lines are gonna square that right up to where it needs to go. Give that some time to adhere. Now, this is where our um, seam is, but we also know that this is the front because that's the panel we adhered the paper to. So again, if you're looking at the template, 
This, if you're gonna add the designer series paper, it's the one that's in the middle, not the one that's on the left. Okay, that's the one you add the designer series paper to. And again, that was two inches wide by four and a half inches tall. All right, so with our seam here and our designer series paper on the front, I'm gonna go ahead and fold in the tabs, liquid glue, and then I put liquid glue on that front flap. Okay, so fold the back flap over, then the front flap, and then I'm just gonna use my fingers here and kind of square up the bottom. And then, using my glue bottle as a tool, just gonna press down from the inside here. I'm just pressing down like this. I realize my hand is in the way there. Okay, so that is the basics of the treat holder. Now, we can put our, I, I bought three of these, because I always make three of every project, and then one for me, one for Lily, and one for Nolan, because Brian doesn't do sweets. I just don't get it. What's wrong with him? <laughs> so then that'll fit right in there. You're gonna have a little bit of the edge popping out. If that bothers you, you can kind of tuck it under and hide it there, but really cute little Easter treat holder. And this should fit. I think the marshmallow eggs are all pretty uniform in size. At least the three that I purchased, they all fit into the treat box, okay? So let's go ahead and grab I'm pretty sure this is still current. I'm cracking up because I always forget. This is the Flirty Flamingo Metallic Ribbon. It's quarter of an inch, but this is so pretty to pair with the Pale Papaya. So we're just gonna tie a bow here to close off our treat holder, and then we'll get to work creating a beautiful daffodil. All right, let's go ahead and do a little bow here always pressure doing this live, isn't it? I actually don't need my reverse tweezers, which I always love to use, but this flirty flamingo ribbon, because of its texture, holds its own knot for me. So I don't need that third hand tonight. And we'll judge this bow here. I just love that little added bling with the gold thread in this flirty flamingo ribbon. <laughs> People are saying they wish they were more like you with sweets. <laughs> if he could bottle that up, you know. Somebody asked about giving a bottle of glue. You could give a bottle of glue. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now I actually have a glue bottle tutorial that's using the delightful tag topper punch and it's a little bit narrower because as you'll see the glue bottle is narrower than the two inches wide. So make sure you visit thepaperpixie.com. I've got a little uh, magnifying glass in the upper right corner. Brian may be going to grab the link as we speak, um, but you can look for Tombow. I think if you search the word Tombow, that tutorial will come up. All right, so that is the treat holder tied off. Now let's get to decorating this. Let's see. I wanna bring in the dies and show you, I did the cutting ahead of time because I wanted to make sure that we could get this done in the hour. So we've got all these pieces and parts. So let me explain a couple of things here. All right, so in the die set, you've got two of the same piece here and two of the same pieces here. You've got two of these and two of these, which I love because this makes it really easy to make multiples. For this, we're gonna do two of the um, flat pieces. Then you're gonna have two of these sort of spiky looking pieces. And then we're gonna layer over these two pieces. So you got the flat and the more detailed. Now here's my tip. Use the adhesive sheets on the back of the detailed pieces. On my sample, I actually used liquid glue and it gets really messy. But if you use the adhesive sheets, I love those things for detailed dyes. That'll make this go together really easily. So there's lots of different ways to do different shaped daffodils using this set of dyes, which I absolutely love. So this piece coordinates with this one, okay? And I'm doing sort of the tone on tone. This is very vanilla, pale papaya, flirty flamingo. So let's go ahead and layer these pieces together. Now here's my trick for getting these two pieces lined up. I look for the piece that has this more sort of jagged point out there and that bottom petal. You'll see the same thing right there. That's how I got these to line up. So let me go ahead and pull 
the backing off. Let's see if my nails will cooperate. There we go. You can use your take your pick tool to help you out there. We'll pull the backing off and then what we can do is just layer these two pieces over each other. And I just start at the bottom, make sure those are lined up and then take my time with the other three sections. So then we've got that really pretty textured first set of daffodil petals. We're gonna do the same thing with the other. I think it's going this way, yep. Dry fit it first before you, now it's, it's okay if you line it up the other way, it's just gonna be a little bit off, but you'll see there's one way that is um, the correct way. So best tip, line it up first before you pull that backing off. So we've got those two pieces, okay? Now we're gonna take our flirty flamingo, flirty flamingo, the detailed piece of the daffodil, or the center, I should say. Layer those two over. That one's easy to line up. Thank you. Like that. Okay, so I didn't do the adhesive sheets on the back of these three pieces because it, that'll give us more flexibility with how we put this together. All right. I'm just gonna grab my silicone craft mat here because in case I make a mess with the glue, I'm gonna grab my liquid glue here Put a little bit of glue in the center of one of those trio of petals. And then the second one, we're just gonna stagger. And look, already that is starting to look like a daffodil, isn't it? Bring that closer to the camera. So cool with that texture. And then on the center, I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue towards the bottom there. And I'm gonna put that a little bit off to the upper right, like kind of going up into an angle. But look at that. I'm obsessed with these dyes and the daffodils that they create. So, how are we doing? The other daffodil dyes. Um, I'm not gonna do that tonight, Becky, but I may do something in the future for that. Um, I'm just not prepared to do that live because I don't have those pieces cut out. So I wanna make sure that we've got time for that. Um, the other thing is in the dyes, they come with all of these leaves, these long leaf stems, but I was looking at my punch stash and I've got the Tulip Builder Punch that's gonna make this really easy. I'm gonna punch two of the tulip leaves to build behind the daffodil, okay? So we can kind of have fun layering these to sort of make it look like a, these technically could fly for daffodil leaves. Something quick and easy though, especially if you're gonna make multiples of this, okay? So do a little bit of liquid glue here. And I'm just kind of layering those, they kind of are going upwards like they would on a daffodil. And this one I'm gonna flip around so we've got a little bit of a different look. Let's do this way. And that's the wider end of the Tulip Builder Punch. Oopsie, I'm already sticking to my glue. We'll do that like that. Super quick and easy. So look in your punch stash, see if you've got that tulip the Tulip Builder Punch. And then let's do a little bit of stamping. I'm gonna use Stays On for this because that's my choice for the basic black or for a dark black ink, and we're gonna stamp Easter Blessings on to Very Vanilla. And I took a viewer tip from last week, I think it was last week. I put the uh, dimensionals in the lid to keep that lid cover stuck to the lid. <laughs> All right, so. I know they're not daffodil leaves, Ava, but you can make them, if you put them in the right orientation, they can look like daffodil leaves. Save ya, saves you a trip through the uh, stamp and cut and emboss machine. All right, so we stamped in stays on Easter blessings. I'm gonna use the double oval punch. Got that. Flirty Flamingo, I've got giant scrap pieces here that I grabbed right in the three minute countdown. So Flirty Flamingo. 
We're going to layer these two together. <laughs> That's Brian clearing his throat as Lily's evening reminder that it's time to put the book down and go to sleep. <laughs> All right, so we've got our sentiment here. I'm going to put that down towards the bottom. I'm using liquid glue here because we're going to pop up our daffodil. Grab some dimensionals. Glue dots work as well, Lonnie, that's right. All right, just a little trio of dimensionals on the back there. We're going to pop that up on the front. And then I'm making a big old mess, a brushed brass butterfly. If I can find my, Lily borrowed some tools of mine tonight, so we're going to grab my other take your pick tool that I have my dye brush with. I don't need, uh, did I drop something? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> and I'm going to pop this guy. I actually don't need that. That's a punch out. I'm going to pop that one right there, a little different than on the sentiment there. See, no two daffodils will be alike. Super fun. All right, so that's the treat holder. Again, that was size to fit, and we'll come back to try a couple things like the, um, I'll show you what the glue looks like in it and the uh, pocket back as well. So that is, look at this mess. This is called the crafter mat. Yes. I think we can put the punches away. Oh, I'm going to need the oval punch. So super fun. Different, different way to do some Easter treats. I know you can, I know that you'll be able to fit uh, Reese's peanut butter eggs in here. These are the Russell Stover marshmallow eggs. I'm going to have to steal that back from you, you know. I'm just kidding. I don't need it. <laughs> He took one of my marshmallow eggs. Um, so lots of fun there. Let's go ahead and do a coordinating card here. This is quick and easy and really to showcase uh, the, the daffodil stamps in the set. And we're going to have some fun with Stampin' Blends. I'm going to show you kind of my lazy coloring with Stampin' Blends because I am not an artist, but I love working with Stampin' Blends. So I'm going to start with the card base. This is thick, very vanilla, and it measures four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. I know many of you ask, I, I typically do my cards in this orientation, sort of that sandwich board orientation, because it's easier for me to photograph. But any of these are interchangeable to have the fold on the side, if you prefer that. But I do usually do portrait cards. It's just kind of my style. So that is thick, basic or thick, very vanilla, I hope I said that correctly the first time around, which I love using the thick basic white or thick very vanilla because I don't need to put a layer on the inside. You can just write on the inside or you could do a layer if you wanted to, like so. That would just give you a little bit of a nice inside there. I've got this piece that measures three and three quarters by five. This is just the regular weight, very vanilla. And then I've got a piece of that uh, 2021 to 2023 in color, designer series paper, the six by six. This is pale papaya and it measures one and a half. Wait, let me measure that. I don't know where my ruler is. Yes. One and a half by five. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and glue that down. Again, using some patterned designer series paper to add a little bit of texture to the front of the card. I'm just getting these layers ready to go and then we'll work on the rest of the layers. And I'm just gonna glue this one down. You could also use dimensionals if you prefer. And again, if you've got any raised edges popping up, just come in with your bone folder to smooth those down. Sometimes with the paper trimmer, you get a little bit of a raised edge, depending on how hard you press on that blade. All right, I'm going to put this off to the side because that'll be ready for us to put our sentiment in our daffodils. 
And then I've got a piece of thick, very vanilla. This is just a quarter sheet. It's like four and a quarter by five and a half. I just cut uh, eight and a half by 11 in quarters. You can get a lot more if you're more strategic, but I'm going to stamp the uh, bunch of daffodils. And I actually chose to put this one on the Stamparatus because we are going to use the Memento ink here. I try to reuse my grid paper if I can. This is the small grid paper, so it's messy from other projects. But I'm just going to stamp with Memento. I like to use the Stamparatus for this in case I don't get a full stamped image with the Memento. Okay, I probably am going to be okay because this is a pretty juicy ink pad right now. We'll get that good and inked. You want to use the Memento with our Stampin' Blends because it is a water-based ink. You need to do water-based ink with alcohol-based markers. That's pretty good. We're going to go with it. But if you didn't have any, um, if there were some areas that weren't inked, you can just re-ink this and stamp it again. That's the beauty of the Stamparatus. I'm gonna grab a scrap piece of our large grid paper. I just cut it down to quarters so I can get a lot more use out of it. You get a hundred sheets in our, uh, I think it's 11 by 17 grid paper, but I cut it into quarters. And we're gonna be using a group of Stampin' Blends. We've got the Light and Dark Mossy Meadow, the Light and Dark Pale, Papa Oops. The Light and Dark Pale Papaya, and the Light and Dark Flirty Flamingo. I probably am only gonna use the light flirty flamingo. If you're interested in my blends labels, you can find those at thepaperpixie.com slash blends. I have those available for purchase. They're a print at home digital download. And I'm gonna start with the light mossy meadow. I'm gonna use the brush tip and I'm just gonna, I'm literally like a lazy uh, stamp and blends color. I'm just gonna make sure that I'm coloring the stems. Don't really have to worry about what the end of the stems look like here. But again, I am not artistic. I'll come in and do a little bit of shading, but I'm sure that it's not technically correct. <laughs> but just to show you, you don't need to be an alcohol marker artist to use our incredible blends. They are my marker of preference because they're so forgiving. So starting with that, and it's also okay if you go out of the lines. All right, so I'm gonna come in, I'll do a little bit of green down there. And then I'm gonna come in with the dark and just, I don't know, I'm sure this isn't anatomically correct with, not anatomically, but artistically correct. I'm just gonna kind of come along the edge of some of these stems. Just to give a little bit of shading. All right. Then we're going to come in with the light flirty flamingo. And I'm just, nope, dark. Because my, um, I need to order more flirty flamingo. I used the heck out of that one. So I'm going to do the dark flirty flamingo on sort of the edges of the tulip. Uh-uh. Daffodil. <laughs> Getting my, um flowers mixed up here. Just doing a little bit of extra. There we go. Then we'll come in with pale papaya. Actually, let's do the light. <laughs> this is the fun part, just picking colors because daffodils come in so many different colors. And I'm just going to like messily. Is that a word? Messily? Probably not. That probably wouldn't be a word on Wordle, would it? Be like not in the dictionary. We're not in word list. All right, coloring these in. And I just did a couple touches of Flirty Flamingo and then I'll come in with a uh, couple touches of Flirty Flamingo, then the Pale Papaya, and then I'll just come in with the Dark Pale Papaya and just, I'm just going on those black lines to give a little bit of color texture here. And easy as that. 
you've got a quick and easy colored set of daffodils. So we're gonna grab our dies and we're gonna go ahead and cut that out. I love that we've got a die to cut out this bunch of daffodils. Now see how much wasted space I use by doing a quarter sheet. You could absolutely get more than four out of a sheet of eight and a half by 11. Gonna grab my post-it tape here. Love this on my favorites page. Just grab a little piece and I'll, I like to use two pieces to sort of anchor this. So let's get these all lined up. Let's see. There we go. Ooh, I like it, Kelly. Messily is in the Cambridge English Dictionary. <laughs> all right, bring them in. I could use my mini here, but. See, I've got post-it tape just hanging out here on the edge to reuse. I use that as much as I can, or reuse it as much as I can. We'll run this through. Yay! A masterpiece. Thanks to the Stampin' Blends, right? And that beautiful line art image. All right, now with the Flirty Flamingo metallic ribbon, I am going to do a little bit of wrapping here. I'm gonna go like this. One, two, three. Maybe one more, there we go. So it's kind of wrapped three times around the center and then I'm going to just tie a knot. Sort of like we've got the stem wrapped with ribbon. You can have fun with this. It doesn't need this, but I thought it was nice, a nice little added touch. And I'm just doing a knot here. All right. Can do a better job of that. Let's see. Let's do a little angled cut here and we'll make a mess with ribbon frays. <sighs> All right, there we go. All right, so I'm going to also stamp. I should have done two while I was at it, but I wasn't thinking. So the Easter blessings again. Now this punched out piece will just go into my scraps folder that I use. So I'll come back and use it a bunch of times. Probably save these ovals as well. And then let's layer these together and then we'll decide where we're gonna put everything. Got some adhesive boogers on my glue bottle. Do you just throw those on the floor like I do? <laughs> I'm sure they don't actually hit the floor. They probably just stick to my clothing. Ooh, the glue is clogged. How are we doing? Good. Or the dogs eat them. Or the dogs eat them, yeah. All right, I got a needle here, or a pin. Hopefully I'm not gonna make a huge mess. How to unclog your glue bottle. Use a pin. <laughs> Remember to clean the pin off before you put it back on the ribbon. <laughs> I love this oval punch. All right, so I think what we're gonna do, yeah, I wanna bring this down a little bit. I had my flower on the sample, up, the flower is up a little too high for my liking. So I'm gonna bring the sentiment down here Love that combo font here with the script and then the serif font, I think, if I'm saying that correctly. Now I just need to find my dimensionals. 
They've gone away and run away. They'll turn up when I need them least. <laughs> so dimensionals on our daffodil punch here, or bundle. All right, I got a new stash. And then I'm gonna grab a mini one just for the bottom of that stem. I'll show you up close to the camera. Oh, they're right there. Just didn't see them. So that's what I did with the dimensionals. They were stacked with the minis. And then I'm gonna put this down here. Like that. Ooh, love that. All right. And one more brushed brass butterfly. I kind of love saying that. Can you tell? <laughs> I think Lily walked away with the take your pick tool. Brushed brass butterfly. We'll pop that guy right there. All right, and there is the quick and easy card. Have fun with your Stampin' Blends. Create some beautiful bunches of daffodils. Great for Easter. You could just change the sentiment. I don't know if um, the Mother's Day greeting will fit in the oval punch, but let's see really quick. I've got this template that I did that I shared on a live stream a few months ago. I don't think the Happy Mother's Day fits in the double oval punch. Oh, it does. Look at that. So yeah, absolutely. Switch out the, the, um, the blessings. <laughs> that too. Switch out the sentiments. And this can easily be a Mother's Day card. Change up the colors. Use different designer series paper, different color scheme. So there we have it. Can I have one of the treat holders? These are tonight's Daffodil Daydream projects. So there you go. Let's go ahead and jump into some Q&A. Let me tee up those questions from you. Where is my mouse? Here we go. How we doing? Should I just do a Q? Let's see. We'll do it that way just in case. All right, let me go ahead to the next scene here. Okay, so I can see everything. I was gonna pick up a few of you that have name or Q in your name. Happy anniversary to Amelia and your husband, you and your husband. Amazing, 47 years. So I have a tutorial on how you label my dies and stamps. Hmm. I mentioned how I label them in my top 10 favorite organizational tips, but I don't think I have one specifically just for how I use, how I created the labels, but I will consider that for a future tutorial. Will a hand sanitizer fit in the holder? Let's check that. Yes, the whole, this actually might be a little big for it. Let's see if I can slide this guy out. But yes, a hand, whoops, let me go back here really quick. A hand sanitizer will fit. It's a little big for it though. You can hear it's kind of sliding back and forth. Great question. Will a gift card fit? A gift card will not, well, it will fit if you put it at an angle. Um, but gift cards are two and one eighth inch wide. So I think you'll see that it's a little bit too wide, but I bet if you put it at an angle, let's see if I can slip it in there. Yeah, on an angle it would fit, but it will not fit with the marshmallow egg in there as well, okay? Brian just popped something into the chat, I think. Oops, did I go too far? Hold on. Go back. <laughs> okay. Well, a gift card, yeah, a gift card will not fit along with the marshmallow egg, Joanne, but you can get a gift card. It's, um, you could tweak it a little bit, but you're going to be wider. Your, 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 um, what's it called? The, <laughs> the delightful tag topper punch it will not have a nice finish on the edge. So that's a tough one. My favorite wet glue, Jennifer, is the Tombow Mono Multi Adhesive. I love this. Stampin' Up! offers it. It's $4 a bottle, and it lasts me a really long time. That's one of my favorite things about it. Not only does it give you time to move things around, but it's also very economical. 
A little flower looking die is the center inside the flower or what? Hmm, good question, Susan. I'll have to look, Stampin' Up! had shared a image of, they had shared an image of how to layer the dies and I will have to look for that um, and see if that addresses, I think you're talking about this one right here, if that's for the center of the daffodil. Somebody else had a question, so they didn't really understand how to use some of the dies, so it would be nice if there was more instruction. So I will look to see if there is, I know that Stampin' Up! put out a layering guide for the daffodil dies, and hopefully that will help you. Is the ribbon in the product? It was, Norleen, yes. My favorites, oh, I think, Brian, you addressed that. My favorites list, Heidi, uh, in case you missed that, thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. I do not have an engineering degree, Kelly. I'm actually, I actually have an accounting and information systems degree. Um, so a bachelor's of science in business administration and I double majored in accounting and information systems. So I love numbers. I love analyzing things. So yeah, the figuring out uh, measurements is right up my alley. Lily loves to read, gosh. She's kind of read some of everything. She's revisited Harry Potter a couple of times. Right now she's reading Percy Jackson. She loves that. She's in the middle of that series. Um, she loves series for sure, but she zips through them so fast. I don't know how much she's retaining while she's reading, but... Um, uh, she's reading the girl that drank the moon. The girl who drank the moon. I think, I think you're right. Anyways, that girl loves to read. If she's bored, she goes and gets a book. Um, they're going to see Grandma this weekend, and they're like, I'm going to have to do something in the car so I'm not bored. Um, but anyways, so do I use the, would I share what I use to store my embellishments in? Yes, Marlene, that is actually, um, I have a whole tutorial on that, actually, on my blog. So if you go to my blog and use the magnifying glass and search for embellishment storage, I use the Avery um, 4x6 vinyl pockets. Brian's probably going to grab a link real quickly. Um, they are intended for passports, but I love them for storing my adhesive-backed embellishments because Stampin' Up's packaging for these is all different sizes and shapes, and I love things to be uniform. So I just take a four, yep, that's the one. I just take a, I cut a four by six backing from our designer series paper. I love to reuse stuff. You can get uh, six of those out of one 12 by 12 designer series paper backing. And that fits perfectly in these little vinyl pockets. They're four by six, again, sized for uh, passports. And then I just label them and I just pull the embellishments from their they're on like a backing when Stampin' Up! sends it to you. And then I just adhere them to that four by six. So Brian, I think just pop that link in the comments. I do use the corner, Michelle, I use the corner of the Stamparatus almost all the time. Unless, I think a couple weeks ago, I had already set up a stamp. We were using it for two different sized projects. And I'll pull it in a little bit using the grid paper if I need to. But for the most part, I keep it in the corner. That just makes sure that I can get everything lined up the way that I want to line it up. I use stays on for greetings because I love the sharpness of the black. It's a sharper black than the memento. So memento I typically only use um, lately with Stampin' Blends. Okay. The mini stamp and cut and emboss machine has a three and a half inch wide opening. The plates are three and a half by seven inches. I did watch Outlander, Cheryl. I watched it. Um, the kids go up to their rooms for quiet time uh, for an hour or two on the weekends. And so I couldn't wait until Sunday night. I watched it. Um, you all know Outlander is my favorite show. So yeah, I watched season six, episode one on Sunday and it was fantastic. Lots to look forward to this season. I do not, well, the colors that are retiring, Maria, are the five in colors, the 2020 to 2022. I'm not going to remember them all, but it's Misty Moonlight, Magenta Madness. The rest of them are gone. Cinnamon Cider, Just Jade. Oh my, what's the other one? There's another one. It's the five in colors from 2020 to 2022. Yeah, gone. Uh, Bumblebee. 
Bumblebee, Just Jade, Magenta Madness, Misty Moonlight, and Cinnamon Cider. I think that's right. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, let's see. The template set of your punches. Um, it's just cardstock, Deanne. Um, it's just, I use, uh, Mary Merlot cardstock. And then I have a coil machine that I use for my, um, catalogs. And so that's what I did for that. Let's see. Best cleaner for Versamark. Linda, I actually just use our Stampin' Mist. Oh, see, Lily borrowed the Stampin' Mist too. Um, this is my favorite cleaner for Vers for Versamark. Stampin' Mist and the, um, Stampin' Scrub. That's my favorite cleaner of choice, especially with the red rubber, because this will condition your stamps for you. All right, I think we're to the end of the questions. Does anybody have any other questions while we're here? Um, I think you guys are great, great questions. Um, I want to thank you so much for joining me live tonight to those of you watching live and hello to those of you who have joined on the replay. If you enjoyed tonight's video and picked up some tips or tricks, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. If you're watching on Facebook, be sure to like and leave a comment. I hope you guys have a wonderful and blessed week. Reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, the 3D project from tonight will post on Friday's blog post. I'll post a picture of the card on tomorrow's blog post. And I will be live again next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for episode 232. I'll have two more projects for you next week. We'll focus on a bundle again or a product suite. And I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. Thanks for joining me again. Take good care. Bye.